In this video, we have a very important topic that intersects small business funding and government accountability. We're diving into a recent letter from two congressmen to the U.S. Domestic Policy Council regarding the Small Business Administration, that's the SBA, and the Department of Veteran Affairs, the VA, and their actions following an executive order which promotes access to voting. All right, so in this letter, the chairman of the House Committee on Small Business and the House Committee on Veteran Affairs they expressed serious concerns about the SBA and VA's implementation of the Biden-Harris administration's promoting access to voting orders, or what the Republicans call a get-out-to-vote initiative. They're particularly frustrated with these agencies' refusals to provide their strategic plans regarding this initiative. This chairman, the chairman highlight that both the SBA and the VA are not only withholding essential documents, but are also failing to comply with congressional subpoenas. This lack of transparency raises significant questions about why these agencies are engaging in voter registration efforts, especially in a battleground state like Michigan. I can somewhat understand VA. If you're helping veterans get to the polls, I mean, I, I guess I, I can understand that, but small businesses, helping small business owners get to the polls, I don't, you know, I, I don't understand that one. The letter notes that understanding these strategic plans is vital for both Congress and the American people to understand why these agencies were using tax dollars towards promoting voter access, and especially why is the SBA not spending money towards helping small businesses with their SBA loan funding process or providing resources to help them, you know, stay in business or obviously expand, keep serving uh, their communities with their products and services that they sell. The House Committee on Small Business initially requested these documents back in April after some back and forth. They had to issue a subpoena in July. Interestingly, the SBA initially claimed that the requested strategic plan didn't, didn't exist, but later had to concede that it was labeled as a draft. Give me a break. Despite this, they continue to withhold it from Congress. So they got their hand caught in the, in the cookie jar, and uh, they're not telling mommy and daddy, you know, what they did. As well as the House Committee on VA on Veteran Affairs had to issue subpoenas to the VA after repeated failures to respond to requests for their strategic plan. As of now, the VA has not complied. So they're not hating over the papers on the plane. It's like when you get caught in middle school, you know, the, the teacher sees you passing a note about, you know, you're talking about how this class is stupid. Or that's what it seems like here. It's like you get you get caught doing something that you shouldn't do and you're not, you know, you're not gonna rat out your buddy to to the teacher. You're not gonna let them know what you did. <clears throat> so what does what does all this mean? Well, it's essential to note that the FBA director is a presidential appointee. So that means that in 2021, Joe Biden put in Isabel Guzman as the director of the SBA. Okay. So if you, if you do take a look at the recent fiscal year in report for the SBA, it's, it's clear that there is a distinct left-leaning bias because you know what, if I was in her position, if my boss, someone that, you know, is in charge of my livelihood and my salary says that, Hey, I'm going up for re-election, whether it was Biden or Harris, depending on when he asked. But uh, yeah, of course, I'm going to write a glowing report about my boss. I'm going to make them look like the, they're the best person ever. And, you know, they're doing so much for the American people. But, you know, again, she's biased because they're the ones that appointed her. So, of course, she's going to be you know, writing glowing reports. Anyway. So with this scandal brewing over and the committee pointing out I, I wrote about this last week. I did a video on this. The community, the $100 million community navigator pilot program, the the misuses of that money and how it's not being tracked very well. They don't know where the money, I mean, obviously they know where the money was sent to, but they don't know, you know, exactly how big of an effect it was on the economy. I mean, all they know is that they claim that there was hundreds of thousands of hours for counseling for small businesses. And, uh, but there's only 500 companies, less than 500 businesses that got started out of that initiative. And we did see some good reports from like the, the tribal areas. So Native American tribes, uh, CDFIs that handle or that help Native Americans get businesses started. They, they said they had a good experience with it. They funded over $10 million, but you know, that was the only good story when I was doing my research about the community navigator pilot program. So between this scandal of providing or promoting access to voting, doing a get out to vote initiative in Michigan of all states. Of course, there was, you know, seven battleground states that there was actually a chance for either Republicans or Democrats to win that state. 
between those two things recently, it's, it's a lot to overcome for sure. But I, yeah, I suspect that Guzman will be out day one of Trump's second term starting here in January. Now, I will give Guzman credit where credit is due. I, she has done some good things. I don't want to bash her uh, this whole time. We did see a significant increase in loans under $150,000, which really filled that gap for very small businesses. They're not getting any credit from the banks. The banks don't want to touch small businesses right now, especially very small businesses. They just Their criteria right now, their guidelines in getting loans, it's very tight. So hopefully all of that opens up in 2025. But we've still seen the banks be very tight with small business loans. So I will say that is one of Guzman's notable achievements. She opened up a moratorium that has been set for decades where uh, it, it was just, it was very hard to get one of these SBA licenses to be able to do SBA lending, which makes sense. You know, the government, we want to make sure that we're not overspending money. We don't want to give businesses money that won't be able to make the loan payments back, at least uh, a good portion of them. <clears throat> so what she did though, she opened up. Uh, there, there was a ton of lenders that were certified, went through it, and they really focused on funding these smaller deals because in the bigger traditional banks, they don't want to service these fifty to $150,000 SBA loans because it takes way too much time and they don't make enough money doing it. So these smaller lenders that just got certified with the SBA, they really focused in on those smaller dollar loan amounts and they need to build their book of business. They need to obviously get in there and fund deals. The least competition was there at the very bottom. They were getting the crumbs, whereas the, the bigger banks are more worried about the bigger businesses. So I will give her credit on that for sure. She did a good job on opening up that moratorium. However, the focus again on voter initiatives rather than supporting small businesses is morally concerning. I understand why she did it. I think anybody, any human can understand that she's got to help get her boss elected. But at the end of the day, they should have never... There should have never been any, I don't want to call it an incentive, but any focus for the SBA to put their efforts into voting. By the way, if you're a small business owner, I don't know how you wanted to vote for Kamala. Like if you just looked at the policies, Trump is going to, the, the biggest policy that Kamala was proposing was that $50,000 tax deduction. But if you're already a small business owner, that wouldn't have apply to you. So there's 33 million small businesses out there in the US. So there's got to be, you know, close to 30 million owners because not every business is owned by one person. So there's more than 30 million small business owners out there. That 20% tax deduction, she never mentioned that she was going to keep that in play. And that expires at the end of 2025. So these small business owners, most of you are an s core, a single member LLC, a sole prop. So I mean, for you all to miss out on that 20% tax deduction, that would have been a huge detriment I mean, that it just would have been a huge blow to the small business owners nationwide. So I don't understand how you just on it based on tax policy, just based on that. I don't understand how you could have voted for Colin versus Trump in this election. Maybe, maybe issues with the tariffs. You're worried about that. I'm not sure. I mean, that promoting access to voting, you're not, I, I can't imagine that they're actually going to small business. Owners. And the fact that they're not releasing these documents means that you know, they're caught. They don't want to give it up because if they give up these documents, obviously it's not going to be, um, it, it's not going to be welcomed by the press or the, the taxpayers because they're going to see that this was just obviously the resources were used in for the intentions never to be used by the SBA. So anyway, those are my thoughts on it. What are your thoughts on the situation? Do you believe the SBA should focus on its core mission? Are you, I mean, are you one of those people that think that, yeah, they should, they should do promoting access to voting. It makes sense. You should, you should go talk to the small business owners, make sure that they get out and vote. I would imagine most of you all aren't going to say that, but you know, again, would love to hear your all's comments and you hear your perspective on, on that situation there. So let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more updates on small business news and funding opportunities. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.